Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining me this week uh, as we again explore the word of God and take the word of God and make practical application, giving us good news we can use from the word of God. I wanna thank you so much uh, for joining me. And this week's theme is simply this, the same bee that stings you is also the same bee that makes honey. That's the theme for the whole week. And we're gonna look at a exciting chapter in the Bible, Acts chapter 16. And we're gonna see um, that the same bee that stings is the same bee that produces honey or something sweet. That's what we're gonna discover. And basically this thought about the bee that produces both the sting and the honey, um, I got that because I once heard about a boy who was playing outside and was stung by a bee. And he ran in the house, he was crying and screaming, he was hysterical. And as the mother was comforting him and pulling that stinger out of his arm, uh, he kept saying, I hate bees, I hate bees. Why did God make bees? And once she was comforting him and got the stinger out, he's still crying. She went and made some toast and he's whimpering and she put some honey on the toast and she gave it to him to eat. And she asked him, she said, son, do you like the honey? And she, he said, yes, mom, I love it. I love this honey. And that's when she said to him, well, son, the same bee that stung you is the same bee that produces the honey. Now, what's the point she's trying to make to her son? The point she's trying to make to her son is many of the things that hurt us the most, <laughs> if we will be patient with God, the things that hurt us the most sometimes produces some of the sweetest outcomes because the same bee that makes or that stings us it's the same bee that also produces honey. It's all about perspective. And when it comes to life, hear me, hear me. This may be the most important point that I've made in the 14 months, plus months of, of doing these powerful points to ponder. Everything in life, it's about perspective. How you look at things and what you tend to focus your attention on. You can spend 99.9% .9 of your time focusing on the sting. I've been stung by people. I've been stung by my employer. I've been stung by my parents. I've been stung by life. You can focus on the sting. Or you can say, yeah, I have been stung. I don't deny that. I'm not in the denial. I have been stung. But you know what? I've had a lot of honey. A lot of sweet things have happened in my life. It's about perspective. Everything is about perspective. And one thing we need to remember is that when you're upset at God because you don't agree with God making bees like the child was, please remember what Isaiah said. Never forget that God's perspective is not the same as our perspective. In fact, let me define what wisdom is really all about. From a biblical perspective, wisdom is simply looking at life from God's perspective. God, give me your perspective on what just stung me. Is this a stinger or is this honey? Listen to what Isaiah chapter 55 and verse eight says. God says this to us, my thoughts are not like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways far beyond anything you can imagine. You can take the word thoughts out of there and insert the word perspective there, and it would still be true. So now it reads, my perspective are nothing like your perspective, because in your perspective, you're thinking about the sting. I'm thinking about the honey. 
the honey. Well, Acts 16 is a chapter about the Apostle Paul in which you think, oh my God, he just got stung. And then all of a sudden you realize there's a lot of honey dripping out of it. Something sweet has come as a result of this. Let's look at, for example, how Paul ends up in a place called Macedonia, Philippi of Macedonia. And all this is taking place uh, in Philippi of Macedonia. We're, we're told in Acts chapter 16, beginning with verse five. I want you to read this it, with me. It says, so the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in number daily. Verse six. Now, when they had gone through uh, Pergia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Verse seven reads, after they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came to Troas. And a, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after they had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Now, I want you to notice something. I want you to notice that Paul is thinking about where he needs to go to spread the gospel. He's on what is called his second missionary journey. On his first missionary journey, he was sent from the church at Antioch to plant churches throughout Asia Minor. And once these little house churches had been established, Paul then on his second missionary journey uh, was going back to visit these churches to see how they were doing. Well, he wants to go to, we're told, Bithynia, or first to Asia rather, he wants to go to Asia. But we are told that the Spirit of God would not let him go. And then he wants to go to, to Bithynia. And then again, the Spirit of God says, no. And then he ends up at a place called Troas. I want you to look at this again. Look at verse six again. Uh, verse six says, now when they had gone through Perg in the region, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit. So it was the Holy Spirit who was the roadblock. Look at verse seven. Verse seven again, after they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the spirit of God did not permit them. Look at verse eight. So going past Mysia, they came to Troas. So, which means that they wanted to go to Bithynia and God said, no. They wanted to go to Mysia and God said, no. And they ended up not with their first choice or their second choice, their first choice was uh, was Asia, Mysia, then their second choice was Bithynia, and each time there was an, a, a shut door, an obstacle in their way, and then finally they end up at a place called Troas, which is their third option. So there are, there are three cities, Mysia, Bithynia, Troas. Paul's first option was Mysia. Paul's second option was Bithynia, and then Paul ends up with his third option, Troas. And the only reason he ends up with a third option is because on, in each instance, it was the spirit of God that said no. God says no to Mysia in Asia. God says no to Bithynia. And then finally, Paul ends up at some unprayed for, unsolicited, uninvited place called Troas. How many times has that happened to you in life? Where you're, you, you wanted your first option and you didn't get it. Then you said, okay, I'll, 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 I'll deal with my second option. And you didn't get that. And then you end up with some third option that is really an unwanted, undesired option. It could happen, for example, in relationships. You wanted your first option, I want marriage. You don't get that. You wanted your second option. I, at least I could just have a relationship <laughs> with somebody who's alive and you don't even get that. 
And there here you are with your third option, really just waking up in the morning by yourself, going through the day by yourself, at night by yourself. You're in Troyes. Or let's say you went to college to get uh, a degree in a particular field. And then once you graduate from college, you say, OK, uh, I hope I can work in this particular job and the job that I have been trained for. And you apply for a job in Mizian, you don't get that. You apply for a job for the second option, Bithynia, and then all of a sudden you're in some unwanted, uninvited, unprayed for, unsolicited place called Troyes. I remember when I was once going through a store and I saw a friend who went to seminary with me and he was in the shoe department selling shoes and we talked. He was a great student, but he was selling shoes. His first option was to be a pastor, but he's selling shoes. His second option was maybe to serve on a church staff, but he didn't get it. Instead, he's there at an uninvited, unsolicited, unprayed for job, which is nothing wrong with selling shoes, but when it is your goal to be in your first option and there you are in an un solicited third option, then you understand what Paul is dealing with. And what makes it so tragic is that we are told it is God that did it. It was not some hater. It was not some obstructionist. It was not some person who was trying to undermine Paul. It says the Spirit of God did it. Then let me ask you a question. Is that a stinger or is there honey? The lesson for the entire week is simply this, that the same bee that produces the sting is the same bee that produces the honey. And what Paul would learn later discover is that what appeared to be a sting, namely that he's at Troy as his third option really, mm, was, the sweet, was the sweetest thing that happened to Paul. It, it was honey. I want you to notice something in each one of these verses. I want you to notice that um, the how it moves from first person plural to third person plural. Uh, please notice it says uh, they. Now, when they had gone through, they had gone through the region of Galatia. They were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach. Notice the they. Look at verse seven. They again after they had come to Mysia. They tried to go into Bithynia, but the spirit did not permit them. Look at verse eight. So passing by Mysia, they, there it is again, they talking about someone else came to Troas. Look at verse 10. Now after he had seen the vision immediately, we, it was when it was, when they were thinking about going to Asia or Mysia, it was they, when they were thinking about going to uh, to uh, Bithynia, it was they. But when they got to Troyes, it says, and we, which means that somebody joined them in Troyes. They met someone in Troyes. And the person they met in Troyes, had they gone to Bithynia, had they gone to Mysia, they never would have met this person who was essential to Paul. And the person that they met in Troyes is the man who is literally writing the book of Acts. And he also wrote the first part of the book of Acts because the book of Acts is a two book sequel, Luke and Acts. And the man they met at Troas is Luke. They met Luke in Troas. And Luke was critical to Paul's success. We have a gospel named the Gospel of Luke. It is the gospel for the oppressed, the gospel of Luke is. And Luke also was, according to Luke, according to Colossians chapter 4 and verse 14, look at this. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. What is Luke? Luke is a physician. Luke is a doctor. And Paul had a, a, an inclination to get sick. He had a thorn in his flesh. So he picks up at Troy as Luke. So Paul thought that when he didn't get his first option, this is a stinger. And when he didn't get his second option, the first option was Mysia, didn't get it. I get stung by the bee. I, I want my second option, Bithynia, don't get it, been stung by the bee. But he gets his third option, 
And his third option is, uh, it is Troas, but at Troas, God had Luke there waiting for him, which means if he had gotten what he wanted, he never would have got his Dr. Luke. And we would never would have known the story about the Good Samaritan or the prodigal son, which is only in the Gospel of Luke. So what looked like a stinger really turned out to be honey. And what I'm trying to say to you, my brothers and sisters, is sometimes what we think is a stinger is really honey because the same bee that makes the stinger is also the same bee that produces the honey. And we're going to see this pattern in the Gospel of Luke, excuse me, in the Gospel of um, the Book of Acts. And we're going to look at this pattern in Acts 16 that what looks like a stinger is really a honey because I'm trying to help you understand that what you think may be a stinger and it stings. I'm not minimizing the sting. But that same bee that produced that single stinger, the same situation and circumstances that stings you can also be the circumstances that bring something quite sweet. You just don't realize it yet. And that's why we have to thank God and, and ponder on that powerful point. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your people and uh, help us to be patient with you and help us to remember uh, that your perspective is not our perspective. So many times we've complained about a stinger that only really was honey. So help us trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for being with me with another powerful point to ponder. And look, um, if you don't have a church home, we'd love to extend to you the invitation to become a part of St. Stephen Church, become a virtual member. So you contact us here at St. Stephen Church, New Start at sclive.org, New Start, sclive.org. Well, peace and blessings to you. I hope you have a blessed day, and I'm looking forward to picking up on this thing, this, 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 this thing, I got this stinger on my mind, <laughs> on this thing, this theme tomorrow, because what in the bee that stings is also the bee that produces honey. But until we meet again tomorrow, don't forget our closing salutation. During COVID-19, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane, and wear your mask. I'll see you tomorrow.